Right now, it's all about practice. The Afghan Youth Orchestra is getting ready for its first international tour to the United States. I think this is a real cause for celebration. Music has come back to the only country in living memory where it was banned entirely. These musicians have come a long way. Al Jazeera first met Fikri Azizi in 2010. The school saved her from a life on the streets. She's gone from playing the traditional Afghan rabab to the cello, and now she wants to show the world that Afghan girls and women have a future here. Americans who think that Afghanistan is a country at war, they are wrong. We have women's rights here. We have children's rights. The orchestra will perform in Washington, D.C.'s Kennedy Center and New York City's Carnegie Hall, playing classical music with an Afghan twist, like a Vivaldi arrangement that includes Afghan rhythms, improvisations, and instruments. We're celebrating, of course, but at the same time, the music that we're doing acknowledges the suffering that this country has endured over the past 40 years. Besides the orchestra's international debut, the school has big plans for expansion. It's building a concert hall and dormitories for the musicians. And by 2015, it hopes to double the capacity to 300 students. This year, only one in five children who audition will get a place. At 12, Farhad Safari is the orchestra's youngest member and hopes to make his people proud. A concert means that there's not only war in Afghanistan, there's also peace. The school's director hopes the concert will change the perception of Afghanistan. I think it's important to show that in spite of reports about suicide bombing, killing, destruction and corruption, there's been many positive changes in Afghanistan. The students and teachers here say even with international forces withdrawing and the possibility of the Taliban having a future political role in Afghanistan, music is here to stay. Jennifer Glass, Al Jazeera, Kabul.